Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Uh, and this is something that we've talked about in bits and pieces, and we've done a few videos about, and I feel it's just uh, so important to rehash some of this because today is a key date. Again, there's so much going on out there. It's all written in the stars, and we are but merely players, actors, and portrayers carrying out these roles while the stars watch us. Indeed. Yeah, we were talking about that last night too. Are there any? Is there anybody else out there that literally talks to the stars? Anybody that looks up and talks to them and then sees if they twinkle back like they're talking back to you? Well, they definitely do. Give it a try on a really clear night. See what happens. They absolutely will. And make sure you're subscribed to all three channels, Evolutionary, EE Arts, and Hearts Home. So Nostradamus was, among other things a court astrologer. Oh yes, we were familiar with his quatrains and his prophecies. And interesting to note that in a time of persecution of witches, <laughs> uh, yeah, astrology was perfectly okay. Yes, and in fact, many times he noted that, saying it was the one art that was above reproach. And John D was also Queen Elizabeth's court astrologer. He gave us Enochian magic. He conversed with beings that he thought were Enochian angels. What we got is he actually talked to Dracos and Greys and was tricked, but he didn't know. You know, sometimes he's, there's just little minor details out there. So, yeah. Yes. And so, you know, people have said, well, how do you know? Well, again, it, it's about discernment. And it's about reading the energies because, you know, with, with both Cindy and I, both of us, we have very, very active and functioning pineal glands. And it's just, it's just like reading a color, um, looking at something that's so obvious. It's, it's, it's just clearly, you know what things are by their frequency. If you, if you have developed these abilities to this point. But yet there are things we can look at even with an undeveloped pineal gland and see some of the markers of certain major events and timelines. We've talked about the X marks the spot, two eclipses, August 21st, 2017, April 8th, 2024, right over the U.S. like it's a big old bullseye. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking too. And it just kind of hits, everything hits right there in the heart chakra. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have signs in the stars and the heavens during these times. These are, as I think, I think most people out there that have been paying attention, depending on your persuasion, you might call them the end times, the end of an age, great uh, period of great, transition and and rapid change uh yeah the dawning of the age of aquarius whatever terminology you want to use things are changing rapidly absolutely undeniably and we have april 20th 2023 mind-blowing solar eclipse stuns viewers in australia and indonesia so there was an eclipse today and this is a picture right here. As we see, people were looking up, looking through their safety glasses. The moon passes in front and then blocks out the sun. So, you know, again, we can look at this as a blocking of the light. Absolutely. And we've talked about the moon. What is the moon, really? You know, they'll tell you that there was some sort of big impact and the moon came from the earth and was hurled to its current location after that impact. Uh, no, there's cultures that remember a time before the moon. There's actually African tribes that say it's two warring brothers that actually put the moon in place uh, just after or during a major cataclysm that we can take to be the younger driest cataclysm of about... 11,700 years ago. And those uh, stories of the Warring Brothers sound an awful lot like Enlil and Enki. When we go to the Italian peninsula and we 
see some, we listen and read some of the earlier mythologies from the Etruscan people. And the Etruscan people are fascinating too because, you know, they didn't speak a Latin language. They had their own little dialect. Where did they come from? Were they survivors of Atlantis, perhaps? Hmm. Maybe, but they also remember a time before the moon, when the moon wasn't here. And actually, there are clues in these legends that give us the idea that before the moon was put in place, oh, the earth was kind of in an eternal spring situation. Uh, you didn't have all those storms that we have now. We don't have the earthquakes. We don't have, uh, you know, all the tidal influences. Actually, things were very, very stable, calm, and peaceful, almost like the Garden of Eden before the moon was put in place. What type of beings could move a body so large? Well, obviously, ones that are technologically much more advanced. So if the moon was put there, by technolo technologically advanced beings, hmm, could they not set the timing to coincide with uh, certain events that they want to transpire, utilizing the motion of the planets and the stars out there to take advantage of understanding the, just how this matrix works? And we look to the moon in astrology and we see that it is all about our emotions. It's, it's all about the mind. It's the mother. It's the grandmother. And if it is placed in the appropriate position, there is balance. But if it is moved in an artificial way, well, then it still carries power over our emotions and it still has power over the ebb and flow of humanity and if it can pull tides and if our bodies are 70 percent or more water imagine how it's going to pull our emotions around depending on where it's at in the chart and where it's at in the moment Absolutely. So this eclipse was really affecting more in line with this area that we see here. And right now, currently, as we had spoken about, there's an awful lot of military hardware around Taiwan, uh, in the Philippine Sea, in the South China Sea, the East China Sea, the Sea of Japan, and even up here farther to the north around Kamchatka. Uh, let's hope there's no errors, no accidents or anything. Yet again, when we look to it and the blocking out of light, because the sun again is a relay for source and for the creator of this uh, universe that we find ourselves in. The sun is the relay. It's that which gives us information. It's that which is triggering the majority of our DNA reawakening that's transpiring at this time. So when the sun is blotted out, that's a blocking out of the information and the light. And we had touched on the three days of darkness in the last video on evolutionary. And think about that again, being cut off from source, cut off from the light, cut off from information, trapped in the dark could be scary. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And I just want to bring up one thing that Cindy had gotten before where she was talking about the fact that the moon might have been put in there by these um, dark beings. But the moon was actually already in existence. The moon does have its characteristics and its tendencies. It is, um, again, an entity of consciousness. It has been hollowed out, turned into more of a ship, an observation center for the watchers, from the biblical term, to watch us, so, so to speak. You know, fascinating, too, in Italian witchcraft, there are legends that say, uh, souls get recycled up in the moon and sent back down to earth. Isn't that all so, so curious? Oh, yes, there's so much. There's so much behind all the things that we take for granted. Oh, when the light of information is blocked out, there's going to be kind of a hiccup in your lifestyle. Things are going to change. It's going to change the course. It's going to change the vibration. It's going to change cycles. So whenever we see these eclipses, there's a lot of change going on. In my mind, I've always looked towards this period, October 14th, 2023, the Great American Eclipse. It's an annular solar eclipse. 
This annular eclipse is the second of three notable eclipses viewable from the U.S. It follows the U.S. total eclipse of August 2017, comes six months before the Mexico-U.S.-Canadian total eclipse of April 2024. Annularity, which where the sun forms a ring of fire around the moon, is visible along a narrow path that crosses the U.S. from Oregon to Texas. It then passes over Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula plus parts of Central America, Colombia, and Brazil. Elsewhere in the Americas from Alaska, Argentina, partial eclipse will be visible. And so, you know, this is fascinating in and of itself as we see the countdown, 176 days. Um, man, there's so much that I get from this. For me, this, this, this has been what I have felt would be the initiation of the war. Uh, this would be where the war would really start to go to the forefront the attacks on the U.S. and NATO would be increasing. And if not the Red Dawn scenario, um, something leading up to that. And this it feels like the timeline's been pushed up, but it still may be that timeline. Uh, you know, again, we don't know because, again, they can make things feel like they're right upon us, and then all of a sudden everything cools off for a little bit, and then you, then you start to relax. And then all of a sudden you get whacked again. This this is this is like a conditioning of prisoners. This is like um, you know doing what do they call it. What was it something boarding? Yeah, you know, what washboarding? Washboarding and yeah, you know the the dripping on the forehead. I mean some some form of torture. It's torture. You know it it's conditioned response torture is what what is being done now. Some have said that they view the fact that the moon is just the right size to eclipse the sun as being that it's the act of the creator of the universe. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it could be the act of uh, technologically advanced extraterrestrials that totally understand exactly where they need to put it to block out the light. And when you look at the patterns of eclipses and all, I, I got to question it. There, there's a lot of things that, that don't seem to follow the exact uh, pattern and timeline. People have questioned the movement of the moon. How many people have, have seen the moon in a spot where you didn't think it was supposed to be? You know, again, doesn't it seem like these things are steered? Well, maybe it is because they actually are steered. And this is part of the big reveal. This is all part of the big reveal. Look at where, you know, this is going to go, as you can see, this eclipse path. Uh, this right here shows you. Now, what do I see? Well, for one, if you take this in reverse, you see the flow of a lot of migrants that have been coming into the country. They've been coming on up through. We, we saw a whole bunch of Chinese nationals coming through Panama and crossing on up through Mexico, coming up into the U.S. We, we also know that at some point in time, according to many prophecies, many people's visions, we're going to be invaded through Alaska, Canada, and down into exactly where this is. This path right here is where the other one we're going to go to in a moment uh, comes from as well. So again, it comes in at, <coughs> at Oregon, and, you know, Oregon, too. Here's Cascadia. It's right here. You know, the Cascadian quake, the great Cascadian quake. And then this is following along the path of the border. The eclipse blocks the light from the U.S. So I feel this is a, a key, key sign that's saying we're in for a lot of darkness in the U.S., and perhaps it is, I mean, it's already underway, obviously, but perhaps there's a darkening at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Well, you look to individuals, too. And when we when we work with people and talk with people, we realize in their lives there's a lot of things that have shifted 
And, you know, it appears to be dark things. It appears to be gloomy times. But we always have to remember whenever one door closes, several other doors open. But it's up to us to find those other doors and open them. But people have been going through a very, very difficult time. I would say probably ever since that sun sneeze when it was at a KP8. And it's like things have not stopped for people it's just been really kind of relentless like this torturous beating of emotions but this is all ultimately it's going to help us grow it's just really hard to walk through it absolutely well this is all about the breakdown of the system yes it's about transfer of power uh, from the u.s and nato to china and BRICS, but that's not going to last long at all that's just a transition again. And, and all their plans and scheming, it's going to end up in so many ways all being negated for many people uh, because we are going to, there are going to be those that break free completely from the system, completely. And, and they are going to create their own little gardens of Eden in different locations. So it, it is the revelation of exactly how this system has divided humanity into different camps. And yeah, there will be those um, that go along with the controllers that jump into the smart cities, get their universal basic income, uh, never even leave the smart cities. What we've seen with the uh, star kids that we have channeled from 2055 is there's no real, there's no airplanes going from city to city anymore. Uh, if there's any sort of flights, they're actually uh, small little private vehicles and stuff going inside uh, of the cities themselves, or they are not really man but humans coming and going uh, from the planet. Ag again, things are going to change. Some of us are going back uh, to a much more intimate relationship with the mother and with Mother Earth. And and those that do that are going to find that they're healthier, they're happier, uh, they're more in sync and harmonious with everything around them. They understand how everything is, is codependent on each other, how we are all cells in the planet, and the planet is just a cell and something much bigger. And they will find that they have increased life expectancy and, and they're able to do amazing things. And the others are going to go the route of the Borg and they will be uh, assimilated and utilized as, as a, a resource and again as a slave uh, source as well. So when you look at this, this is so telling because this is really uh, the invasion route that has been leading into the U.S., uh, for a long time, but which has increased dramatically again since 46 took office. Five to six million people have crossed the border illegally. And, you know, it's curious, is it not, how, how these X's cross. So when you look at the 20, uh, 2023 October eclipse here, and then we look at the 2024 total solar eclipse over here, there's an X that's put right on Texas. And, you know, again, this, this goes through the St. Lawrence. It's fascinating when doing research about earthquakes in the St. Lawrence region. Uh, there's many large earthquakes in the St. Lawrence region. Now, where we understand why we have those in Cascadia, perhaps even a 9.0 that happened in 1700, they don't really have an explanation for why there's large quakes in the St. Lawrence region. So that's really curious. But then again, too, the X crosses here in Texas, right, where it's been fracked like as much as anywhere, probably in the U.S. and in the world. And all those fracking wells uh, are just going to amplify the effects of any earthquakes. And then again, you know, as we were noting, you do find really large quakes uh, down in Mexico in that region where uh, the Pacific and Mexico are right at that line of the eclipse. So it's all really, really fascinating to see. Here is the April 8th, 2024 total solar eclipse and its path. And of course, when we do the first two, the X marks the spot right over the New Madrid Fault. 
So again, uh, I and many people have felt that we will probably see Cascadia, San Andreas, and New Madrid go off uh, before we see 2025 roll in. So, you know, it's, it's just fascinating to see all these signs in heaven. But when you think of it from the standpoint that the controllers, in order to in order to sidestep karma, they have to tell us everything and they have to get us to choose to go along with it. And this is what they've done. This is absolutely what they've done. Well, by laying out the path in front of us, laying out these options, laying out these things and putting these carrots in front of people's faces. And, you know, when you're in a desperate spot and you need certain things, you're going to follow that carrot. You know, what if what if your children are on the hook and you need to feed your children? You're going to follow that carrot. And that's exactly how they do it. And this article goes into this is from space.com talking about you know, what areas are most likely to have snow and, and inclement weather where you won't be able to get to witness it. And talking about climate change, there they go again. <laughs> oh, guys, please stop with the climate change. So then we have the great Pluto return. Pluto rules Scorpio and the eighth house. Pluto, the most distant heavenly body, is still considered a planet in astrological terms. Pluto is associated with death sexuality and transformation think about that just just think about that statement what pluto is associated with and think about all the change we see going on in the world mm -hmm. you, you guys you, you you know what we're saying here oh it's so fascinating to look at it in in more of a sine wave as you see Pluto's transit cycles in relation to its position during the Declaration of Independence at 27 degrees Capricorn. And, you know, in the Vedic astrology world, uh, they don't pay attention to Pluto, but you do have many uh, great astrologers that have been utilizing more of a hybrid system, taking into account uh, the axial tilt of the Earth as well as the outer planets. So, you know, you'll find uh, people like our J Joni Petrie and that, that does look at, at both aspects. She looks at it from a Vedic standpoint, but then adding in the fact that, yeah, Pluto, of course, it has, it has an effect on things. Uranus and Neptune, of course, they all have an effect on us. Everything has an effect because everything is interconnected. Right. You know, you look at, at Pluto and the bigger planets as far as generational changes or, you know, what's the biggest transition and the biggest change in your life going to be? And that's how it's been really nice watching Vedic astrology, Western astrology, bring their information together so that on, on the software you have the option to pull those larger planets in on a reading or not. And currently we're in a period where Pluto has uh, recently gone into Aquarius, but it's going to move back out of Aquarius and then come back into Aquarius yet again. So, you know, one of those transition points we're in right now, and, you know, we have about three months basically of being in Aquarius, where you will see a, a lot more of a big reveal going on. And then it might be a little bit of a cover up by the controllers, and then we'll have more of the reveal. So, you know, it's fascinating when you look at all these astrological signs. You know, this all points to absolute, complete change on, on the global stage. A lot of change. So, you know, this is what we talk about on the channels and how mostly how do you prepare for that change? Because it's not like you can avoid this change. It's happening to everyone across the boards because... We are all tied to these planets energetically. Our chakras are tied into the planetary systems. So when these big bodies move, um, they're moving our emotions. They're moving our ourselves around. And depending on where you're at, you know, in relation to the planet, um, we'll have to see what's going to happen in your life. But knowing that these planets and us, we are directly tied. So when there's huge changes at foot, we're all going to go through them. But at least we have the choice as far as which path are you going to take to view those changes or which path are you going to take to see them used in your life. Do you know how many 
myths there are out there about the constellations. And they'll give a tragic story, and then they'll say, and so this person was put up by the gods up into the heavens, and that's the constellation of this, and that's the constellation of that. And there is actually a line of thinking that in some way, shape, or form, our higher selves literally are, perhaps, stars. So that could be also part of that interconnectivity that we are speaking about. As the stars are watching us and we are watching them. Well, the external earth is a mirror. And when we look out to those stars and we think or we speak, watch them. They, they think and they speak back. Absolutely. As always, guys, thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. If you need to make an appointment for energy work for your own astrological chart, a Vedic chart, uh, reach out to us at evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com. Much love, God bless, and namaste. Namaste.